Y'all did a beautiful job, might I say. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How lovely. Happy first day of Advent, friends. Isn't this exciting? Can you believe it? Already here. It startled me personally, but it's okay. Won't you stand with me for this morning's Advent liturgy? Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice all the earth. The glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Rejoice greatly, shout for joy. See, your King is coming to you. He is righteous and brings salvation. Praise you, the Lord God of Israel. You came to the help of your people and you have set them free. You have raised up for us the mighty Savior, a descendant of your servant David. You promised through your holy prophets long ago that you would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. You have shown your With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abram, you promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve you without fear. So that we might be holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. By your tender mercy, you caused the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us. To give light to those The voice of the messenger echoes from the desert, calling us to prepare the way of the Lord and to make a straight path on which he may come. Let us confess our sins so that our crooked ways will be made straight and the rough ways smooth. Gracious Lord Jesus, you come to us with the good news of salvation, but you often
Through John the baptizer, we hear the Lord's promise, turn away from your sins and God will forgive your sins. Eternal God, ruler of all ages, graciously you come to us in order that we might come to you through the merit of Jesus Christ, strengthened by the Holy Spirit. Help us and all your children to respond to all your gospel with faith, love, and hope. God of faith, you created humanity to serve and praise you. And even when we rebelled against you, you promised to send a Savior to redeem us from our sins. Strengthen our faith in your saving work through Christ, as you chose the people of Israel to do your promise of redemption through the prophets, and may people today believe in your good will for all that you have made. God of love, you fulfilled your promise of a Redeemer in the life death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Grant us the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we may share your love with the sick and the afflicted, with the poor and the homeless, with the victims of injustice and discrimination, and with all who are experienced in times of trouble. God of hope, you comfort us through our Savior's promise to return in glory at the end of time. God of faith, love, and hope, to you and to you alone we pray. For you are our God, the only God, forever and ever. Amen. Advent, we join together in the Hosanna anthem, and it's in the blue hymnals that you can find there in the pews. It's on page 239. And as is our custom, the men will begin with, by singing the, the first part, and then the women will respond with the second part. Now watch out, when you get to the top of the third page, there's a repeat. So make sure you go back to the beginning and then all the way through again. Hosanna. No! 
And please remain standing and we'll join in the concluding um, sentences of our liturgy. Lord, you have kept the promise you made to our ancestors and have come to the help of your servant people. We praise you, Lord. You are enthroned in glory, yet you came and continue to come for all who will receive you. We praise you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hey, Sam. What? Wait. Sa Sam. What? Um, we messed up. Huh? Messed up? We brought out the manger, but, well, you know, it was supposed to get us into Advent and all, but we forgot the baby Jesus. No. We, we got to go find Jesus. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. Abby, Abby. It's on purpose. This is intentional. Huh? We, have the, we have the stable. We have the manger. We, we're, we're waiting for baby Jesus to arrive in Advent. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Okay, what's that over there? Do you see that thing? The Christmas tree. A Christmas tree. Right. You have a Christmas tree at your house? Well, not yet, but I will. Yeah. Are there presents underneath it right from the beginning? Well, not yet, but no, there, no, no, no. There you will. leave an empty space so that because we have that hope that there will be presents under there, and it's the same in Advent. We leave the manger empty because we have that hope that Jesus is coming and Jesus is going to be here. Okay, I think I get it now. So. The manger is empty this morning, leaves space for getting excited about Jesus coming right. and about the gift of Jesus that then we can share with everyone else. Exactly. And guess what? You may not see the baby Jesus here, but in the rest of the service today, you're going to see Jesus and you're going to hear Jesus because we're going to hear words from Scripture and we're going to hear what Clyde has to say and we're going to hear from his path and we're going to hear from Samaritan Ministries and we're going to hear how Jesus is right here with us, giving us hope right now. And then we're going to go out and share that with people everywhere. Sound like a plan? Cool. Okay. I good? Okay. Thanks, Evie, for the heads up. And children, when we get to the, the sermon is going to come early today, but when we get to the offering, that will be your cue to go out for children's worship. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Philadelphia Moravian Church on this Sunday, November 27th. It's a Chris Mon tree, not a Chris Mus tree, just to be clear. Um, well, we're happy that you all are here, whether you are here in person or whether you are joining us from home online. Um, it is indeed a wonderful day, and we're going to try to give you some news of the church in a certain sequence. So first things first, hey, there's meat left from the men's meat sale, and it will be available right after this service in the Love Feast kitchen. This coming week with our 12 days of service, there are still some opportunities available. One tomorrow from one to two to ring the bell for Salvation Army at the Lowe's Foods on Robin Hood Road. If you are interested in having that spot, Kay Windsor will have her computer in the friendship room immediately following this service and she will sign you up. Otherwise, it will be handled, but if you'd like to have that opportunity, it is yours. Um, next Saturday, we will have our Traveling Love Feast, and for those who may be interested in joining us for part or the full three hours that we have planned, our first stop is going to be in Louisville at the home of Marilyn and Bill Wood, and that will be at 2 o'clock, and so we will leave the church at about quarter till using the church bus, and then we will conclude at the home of Johnny Hooser at 4.30. That is our schedule as it stands right now, subject to change, just depending on, on health or other situations with some of the folks we're visiting, but that is currently our plan. 
Later in this service, it's here, the Advent Devotion Guide, which this year is called The Message of Christmas. And I want to point out a couple of features um, to you that make this one truly unique. As you know, Chris Mons helped us decide what scripture passages to use. And thanks to Sarah Huddleston, there is some nifty artwork inside that will make this something the whole family can enjoy. And so, let me just turn your attention. Of course, you'll want to read Pastor Sam's opening letter, and then you'll flip over to these two pages which show you symbols of some of the chrismons that are on our tree. We want you to have this before the service ends, right after the sermon and after we've concluded everything, so that on your way to Sunday school, you might want to stop by the tree and take a look and see how many of these you can identify. Then as you go through the guide during this Advent season, you'll see that each section has artwork for children to complete, starting with the fish, and then the shepherd's crook, star, angel, cross, etc. So this is going to be something that you're going to really enjoy, and our ushers will be distributing those before the service ends. And speaking of the tree, as you, um, as you approach it, remember that ornaments are fragile. In fact, the tree is fragile, and so you'll want to remain, um, I, I guess there should be some social distancing twixt you and the tree. Let's just put it that way. Um, now, this afternoon's schedule. It's so dreary. It's almost as if we should light the tree now, isn't it? But then what would we do at 5.30? No, no, we have to wait. Um, and so please come between 4.45 and 5 o'clock for a cup of hot chocolate in front of the church, but bring your coins to place in buckets under the portico where Jan Kelly from Samaritan Ministries and some of the Cornerstone men will greet you and then join everyone around the tree. The rain will be gone. It's going to be pleasant and warm and a wonderful afternoon. The band will play at 5. We will light the tree at 515 and then we will process quietly into this sanctuary and at 530 we will light the tree and then you can go home and enjoy the rest of your evening. I believe that's it for this morning's announcements. And so, thank you all very much. Oh, quick shout out, Beverly Jones, Julia Turner, who helped light or who helped um, place the ornaments and lights on this tree yesterday, and to David Stanfield, who remained quite restrained as he supervised the process. So thanks to everyone. Um, it was a terrific afternoon. Thank you. And as you look around and see more decorations, thank you to Bill and Judy Gatewood for, for um, being in charge of that and, and others as well. And Clyde, by the way, I, I was pointing to the Christmas tree outside when I said that this morning. We're done. This is the... Our gospel reading today is from one of Jesus' sermons toward the end of the Gospel of Matthew, and it's found on page 806 in the Bibles that are in your pews. And Jesus said, but about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Now, we can take those as foreboding words, or we can take them as hopeful words. And so we're going to sing our response to those words as our hope and expectation.
Now, when you see in your bulletin that it says introductory words, you might think that that means that I'm simply going to introduce our guests today. But today, I would like to think of our mission moments as part of the sermon. So this isn't the way we usually do it, but the sermon is starting right now because they are part of the message for today. You know, a good sermon needs a good illustration to help make the point. And today, we will have several wonderful illustrations or examples of what my message is all about. So I'll start with some introductory words about God's word for today. And then we'll see what all of this looks like in real life, in the real world, within our walls and beyond. Now, the season of Advent is a time not only to look ahead to Christmas, which of course is four weeks from today, but also to look back to the birth of Jesus more than 2,000 years ago and celebrate that story, and then look forward, not just four weeks forward, but forward to that day when our Lord will come again, what we call the second coming of Christ, when the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. When will that be? Well, here comes the answer. Are you ready? I don't know. <laughs> if you're disappointed in my answer, let me remind you that I'm in very good company because in our gospel reading today, we heard Jesus say that he doesn't know. But that hasn't stopped people all through the ages from claiming that they do know or from trying to know. There have been many who thought they knew. Every generation, beginning in the first century, not too long after Jesus ascended into heaven, every generation has had voices claiming to know the details of our Lord's return, when and where it will happen, and all of the chronological steps. People throughout the ages have looked at the things happening around them, wars and natural disasters and political upheaval and other signs of the times, and have concluded and declared that they are living in the end. End times. Well, of course, for us as finite human beings, relatively speaking, in the greater scope of things, we're always in the end times because we are a moment, but God is forever. But some people have felt the need to be very specific. In the second century, a group of Christians in what is now Turkey left their homes and in some cases their families and formed a community where they were going to wait for Jesus to return. They were misled by the teachings of a man named Montanus. But religious leaders, astrologers, prophets, mathematicians, as well as possibly well-meaning Bible scholars have used all kinds of calculations to tell us that the world would end on February 25th, 1524. No, September 2nd, 1666. No, sometime in April, 1843. Nope, March 25th, 1988. Nope, May 21st, 2011. Nope, December 21st, 2012. Spoiler alert, it didn't. As human beings, we just don't seem to like not knowing. But the gospel passage that we read this morning is all about not knowing. We heard Jesus say that no one knows the day or the hour of his return. Not even the angels or the son, Jesus himself, only the father. And he said that in the days of Noah, they knew nothing until the flood came. And that we should keep awake since we don't know on what day he will come. And if the owner of the house had known what time the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake. But he didn't know. We don't know when to expect. We, we don't know. So maybe instead of being concerned with when, we need to focus on what? Not when is Jesus coming back, but rather what does he want us to be doing while we await his return? We believe he will return. We declare that every time we say the Apostles' Creed. We believe he shall come to judge the living and the dead. But what does he want us to do before that happens? What would we like him to find us doing when he returns? Now, the Apostle Paul talks about watching and waiting. But what does that really mean? Well, that word watching isn't a passive kind of watching, like watching TV or watching a football game. The game is going to turn out the same whether I watch it or not. Now, my friend and former boss, Justin, in Wisconsin, is convinced that whenever I watch the Packers or the Badgers or the Brewers play, they lose. 
and he begs me not to watch because he thinks that I jinx them. I can assure you that that is not the case. And I was thinking about that every yesterday when I was watching Ohio State and Michigan. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, and I did not watch Carolina and North Carolina State. Um, but seriously, that kind of watching has no effect on the outcome. And I don't believe that's what's meant by watchfulness when it comes to watching for the return of the Lord Jesus. No, it's more like a watchman, vigilant, or shepherds keeping watch over their flocks, or when a spouse says, watch the children while I'm gone. That doesn't mean sit and simply sit back passively and watch whatever bad thing they're doing and throw your hands up in the air because all you were told to do is watch. No, the way we watch for his return is an active sort of watching because we're not just watching for signs. We're watching the way we live, the way we act, the way we conduct ourselves as followers of Christ, joyfully looking forward to his coming again. And the last one, waiting, is also an interesting word in English. If I say that I'm in a restaurant waiting on a table, that can mean two things. It could mean that I'm sitting outside on a bench or in the lobby waiting for the little device in my hand to start buzzing so that I'll know that my table is ready and my wait is over. That's passive waiting. But of course, if I say I'm at a restaurant waiting on a table, it could also mean that I'm a waiter, a server, attending to the needs of others. I would suggest that that's the kind of active waiting that Jesus is encouraging us to practice as we wait for what scripture calls the day of the Lord. He calls on us to be serving as we are waiting. We have some waiters with us today. We have some servers, and it's kind of nice that they're named Jenna, Jelly, and Jan. <laughs> um, and, and, and they're going to share with us how they are waiting and watching for Jesus' return by serving within and beyond our walls. And then at the end, we'll have a moment where we can lift them up in prayer. So we'll hear first from, from Jenna and Jelly, I believe, and maybe more. Good morning. We are so thankful to be here with you guys this morning. Um, we are representing Mount Jubilee Ministries, which is a Christ-centered nonprofit in Reedsville, North Carolina. We currently have three day programs that operate in churches, one in Winston here at New Philadelphia, one in Greensboro at Westover Church, and one in Reedsville at Reedsville Christian Church. So we just wanted to come and say thank you so much for your partnership in ministry. Um, we serve adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, and our theme verse, our mission verse, is in Proverbs, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who need an advocate. And so in the partnership that we have with you guys, y'all are helping us move that mission forward in our obedience to the Lord and his word of recognizing that everyone is made in the image of God and that regardless of our abilities, our disabilities, what we can or cannot do, our value and our worth of our eternal soul is based off of who our Heavenly Father is. And so daily, um, we operate three days a week at each His Path program. Um, and we actually have a few of our His Path heroes here. Lydia and Luke, would y'all stand for us? These friends, can we give them a round of applause? Thank you guys so much. So they attend the program here at New Philadelphia on Mondays, Wednesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Um, we have a Bible time and worship every day. We do volunteering, different things like that. Um, and really the theme of our programming is so that everyone involved will, will understand their worth and their value and how they are made in God's image. And so everything we do is centered around that. And the fact that you guys allow us to operate during the week here in your beautiful building with your beautiful people who work here, it's truly such a blessing. Um, Y'all have been so hospitable, just opening your doors and your hearts to us and we truly appreciate it. 
Um, and Jelly <laughs> is going to share a little bit on just specific day-to-day um, on the ground ministry, how y'all have truly blessed us. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angelica Vigata, or Jelly. I'm the program coordinator here at His Path Winston, and I just wanted to say a sincere thank you um, from all of our His Path friends and staff for showing us Christ's love, not only through the facilities that we get to use, but through your actions and your words. Um, thank you specifically to Mr. Tim for all that he does to keep us safe, and Mr. Fred. Also, Miss Rachel and Miss Clyde for keeping us involved in all their church activities and events. Thank you to our Bible time teachers, Miss Evie, Abby, and Pastor Sam for investing in our spiritual lives, um, which is really important. And also thank you to the men's and women's committees meeting um, for hosting us for events and always being thoughtful of us. A verse in Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Um, We are so blessed and thankful for God for bringing um, all of you into our lives. Um, We just thank you so much for all that you do and all your thoughts and your prayers and for letting us be in this beautiful facility. And we thank him. Um, We'll have a table in the back. Um, Please visit us. And just to know more about how you can be involved, thank you. Thank you so much. Please do visit the table there in the commons area. And we are also going to have a, a, an opportunity to lift them up in prayer in, in just a little bit. Jan. Good morning. Thank you so much uh, for having me this morning. And I want to thank you for all that New Philadelphia has done through many, many years for Samaritan Ministries. You've been involved in the Penny Campaign for years. Uh, Before the pandemic, uh, several of you would come and share a Christmas love feast with our guests in the shelter, which was probably my most favorite time at Samaritan. Uh, You give generously and you volunteer, so I'm thankful for all that you do. Penny Campaign is about making every cent count. The amount of donation doesn't matter because it all adds up and we make a difference together. By giving to the Penny Campaign, you provide a warm meal, a safe place, and a friendly smile as you give. I wanna share three quick stories about Samaritan Ministries so you can be reminded of the three programs that we have. Samaritan is consistent. Our soup kitchen has been operating for 41 years since March of 1981, and we've never missed a single day of serving lunch. We've provided lunch to the community for over 14,000 days in a row. We've kept serving because we think everyone deserves to eat. Our guests count on us to give them nourishment along with a warm smile each day. We ask no questions, men, women, children, homeless, housed, anyone can get a meal at the soup kitchen. Our shelter is a safe place for men. Robert, who is a former guest, said that checking into the shelter was the lowest, lowest point of his life. Many of our guests share that when they check in, they've given up and they might as well die. Our guests seek shelter for many different reasons. Losing a job, navigating a mental illness, looking for affordable housing. And we seek to walk alongside of them to connect them to resources, to get them back on their feet, and to live. Our third program, Project Cornerstone for Homeless Men with Addiction. Last week, Cleveland, one of our Cornerstone men, shared his journey with a group of our donors. He talked about taking his first drink at the age of eight. And then he glossed over the abusive childhood he experienced with an alcoholic father. 
Now at the age of 61, he's starting over. Though he came to Samaritan broken, he's learning about addiction and about himself. And he's clinging to his faith in God and looking forward. He has hope. And in his words, he's finding the spark of joy again in his life. So as you give to the Penny Campaign, you provide a warm meal in our soup kitchen, a safe place to stay in our shelter, and an opportunity for a second or third or even fourth chance through Project Cornerstone. I thank you for being active in your waiting, believing in and responding to our mission of providing food, shelter, and hope through Christian love. Thank you very much. Jenna, Jelly, and Jan, thank you so much for, for sharing here. And we're going to have a special prayer for them, but I am also remind you of other people who um, are standing in the need of our prayers today. We pray for, for Jim Ellis and Beth Ellis and Reba Ellis. We continue to pray for, for Buddy Hill. I was happy to hear that this past week, um, maybe it was a little Thanksgiving gift, was, was, was a little better. And Annecy Daggett, as she continues to, to recover. Arkin Stewart, who has faced some triple bypass surgery, and Kent Jones. Um, right now, Lacey Bellamy and Dorothy Craver are both in the hospital. I had a good talk with Lacey um, last night, and I think he's going to be he's going to be fine. But he had to spend his birthday in in the hospital, and Dorothy Craver there as well. I'm going to ask all of the folks from his path and Samaritan Ministries to to remain seated, and all of the rest of us to stand and lift a hand, asking God's blessing on them today. Gracious and loving God, we are filled with so much hope and joy from your word, from the promises, knowing that you will return, that just as you came to earth as a baby, you will come again as our king and as our judge. We thank you for those who are doing so much to prepare for that return, and we are so thankful that we can even have a part in that. So today we lift up to you not just projects and, and, and places and programs, we lift up to you the people, people who are serving, people who are being reached and touched by these wonderful ministries, and we pray that you would, you would bless them and help them to continue to, to do what they're doing in reaching out to, to people in so many ways and helping people to have that same hope and that joy that, that we experience in you and that we experience in this place. So we lift up to you the Mount Jubilee and, and specifically the His Path Ministries. We lift up to you Samaritan Ministries and Cornerstone and the other, other programs for the shelter and for especially for, for the, the program with, with those um, facing addictions. We, we lift up all of these people to you and ask you to continue to bless them and to fill them with hope and joy in Jesus. Amen. Please be seated.
Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we await with great anticipation the greatest gift to humankind, touch our hearts to greater generosity that his story might be told and heard and felt throughout the world. Amen. Please be seated. So love, hope, peace, joy. I think this morning we have heard examples of how those words and those concepts that we celebrate during Advent, how they are being shared and how they are being carried out. Love and hope and peace and joy. So now we come to the closing statement. And no, I'm not going to reveal the day and hour of Christ's return still. But I want to say that God reveals just enough to give us hope so that we can act and serve in faith and in love and seek to live in peace with one another as we look forward to his coming again, not with fear, not with doubt, not with anxiety, but with great joy. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the joy of this season. We thank you that even in the midst of many unknowns, even in the midst of challenges and things that would seek to, to stifle that, that, that joy, that we can remember that our hope is in you. We thank you again for the, the wonderful ministries of people who, who spread love and, and peace and hope and joy and who do this with the faith that not only will you return, but you are here with us through your spirit even now. We pray that you would be in the midst of all of our celebrations of this season and in all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. So now as we sing our closing hymn, you are going to receive your devotional guides. And then I would remind you that 
Following the service, please take a moment to come and, and find out a little bit more about, about his path and the ministry that they have here within, within our building. And you can speak with Jan as well to find out more about Samaritan ministry. So let's stand and sing, Come O Long Expected, I'm sorry, stay seated so that they can hand you the, the books. Come O Long Expected Jesus, Born to Set Your People Free. And don't forget that this afternoon we will have, we've been debating whether it's the trees lighting or the tree lightings. I think um, the one that will be outside, the Christmas tree, and then we'll come in here for the lighting of the Christmas tree. And it will be a beautiful event. And from what I understand, the weather is supposed to get really nice this afternoon. So being outside together will be, will be wonderful. Um, please stand now as we receive the blessing of the Lord and as we share that with others. I will raise one hand asking God's blessing on, on all of us and again on the ministries that we have celebrated today. But I also raise another hand and I ask you to do the same, thinking of one person, picturing one particular person for whom the, the, the second coming of Jesus might not be something that would, that would stir up joy in them, but might stir up um, fear and trembling and thinking, how can we, how can we reflect love and joy and, and, and peace and hope for them so that they can look forward to that return as we do here? So receive the blessing of the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and be with all of them in Jesus' name.